It's a new story. Too young for anyone to predict the ending, sure. Maybe the protagonist isn't very skilled and has a drinking problem, but she's only been around for two days and who knows what will happen. You don't know if you think you can change. You really don't know what you think at all. Maybe that's why you drink. Makes things a bit simpler. You're sorry, but you have to do this. This is a choice you're making as Cadia Monaghan and no one else. You know it's not a good idea and that you might very well die. You don't care. At least you think you don't. You don't know anymore. You're kind of a mess. You don't know if this is going to end, but it's still better than knowing there awaits a sad ending. Bottoms up. See you again soon. You think. You hope. Well, something different happened this time. And you've got clothes. Um, seems like you met a necromancer. That's about all to say on the matter. Well, you're alive. Yeah, I guess that's another thing you could say. Why is that underlined? For some reason, I've just got like this innate thought that whenever something's randomly underlined, it's just going to be a random link. I'm proud of you. Not for the drinking, or for keeping the name Cadia. You still have hope, at least. At your worst moments of despair, you still had hope, even if you weren't fully going along with that hope. So there's something to work with. You haven't given up, and that's something that we can come back from. Thanks. You guess it's kind of nice to believe that things can still be okay. You appreciate the sentiment anyway. And then it goes from the guy being, I'm proud of you, to I'm disappointed. When I first looked at you, I saw hope. Thought you wanted to climb out of that previous life, out of that hole. Thought you could do it. Thought you had faith. Plus, dead now. You're right. People can't change. And you're not an exception. Walks out of the room. Um, doesn't matter how many times you try, you'll always end up falling back here. Um, so these are like two different ways of going about it. This guy is like trying to be nice to her. Say that, hey, things can still change. And this guy, whether it's on purpose or not, is being very judgmental, but in a way that Seems like it's trying to encourage growth. It's being as judgmental as possible in an attempt to try to get them to see their situation and actually turn around rather than just to put them down. Just look at you. You had some... You had to do one thing. You had to deliver a letter. Even the lowest rung of society can do that, and you couldn't. Don't think you can turn your life around. Also valid ways of looking at this. Yeah... You have some serious thinking to do about your life, and you're not looking forward to it. Luckily, you have more pressing issues to deal with right now. Like figuring out what in the world happened here. Let's see here. In dice, we've got some runes. Either a belt or a gag? Potion and a new book and a bunch of skulls. Sword's still there, or is that a different sword? Oh, that's a different sword because the sword was taken away last time. Uh, arcane symbols and still a little bit of remnant purple paint. Take an inventory, and apparently booze makes things simpler. I believe it when I see it. Honey. <laughs> Fuck around for your stuff. Hopefully you didn't lose everything this time around. Check stats of those cuts you got on your hand, as well as that rash you got from the poison ivy as a rush... I can't words. Check stats of those cuts you got on your hand, as well as the rash from your poison ivy as a rough gauge of how much time you were out. That's actually pretty smart. Um, How did you end up back at Quillweave's place? Weren't you like more than halfway to Kavach? It seems like you'd have a 
more luck of getting to Kavach than getting back to Quillweave's place from there. Wasn't there a talk before about a cult? That one woman that was in the bar with the dagger in the very beginning was saying how she was part of a cult. And in most parts of Cyrodiil, necromancy is actually outlawed, from what I can remember. So I'm guessing this actually has something to do with that cult that we heard about. All your stuff is gone. The cuts in your hand have scabbed over, but not healed much beyond that. That means that probably only a night or so passed since you got them. The poison ivy rash on your wrist has gotten worse, too. Something about this method of checking the passage of time feels incredibly futuristic to you, but you're not sure why. No, I would have thought of that, probably. No, I wouldn't have thought about that if I just woke up. If I just woke up... I'd probably be lying in bed for like another half an hour before I have a coherent thought. Um, anyways. Wait, before you do anything, do you still have your lockpick? You already said that all your stuff is... No comment. <sighs> Katia, talk to the nice skeleton manservant, please. You attempt to strike up a conversation with the skeleton, but he appears to be nothing more than a simple automaton whose only function is to clean the room. He dutifully goes about his work while completely disregarding you. If you want answers, you're going to have to find them elsewhere. Check that strange pendant thing on the grow -o. Is that a... Yeah, that's what I thought, but I was hoping it was a belt. Clearly, that is a pendant of silence. And that's one of the things that the store sells, I think. Amulet of silence. What's... Oh, there's another sold out one. What was that before? It's a pendant of silence. Come on, get it right. Um, where were we? Right here. Clearly has a pendant of silence. Yeah, just kidding. It's a ball gag. You're just going to leave it there for now since you don't have anything to carry it in and it might be kind of embarrassing to be seen with it. Take a furtive glance under the bed. Are the yo-yo and pineapple still there? No pineapple this time. Thankfully. Just a whole bunch of fruit. Um, you find the fishbowl of peas, though. Oh, cool! Presents! Yeah, what are those? It's a box of Nord chocolates. This is a rather extravagant gift. I mean, for you anyways. There's a note and a bottle next to it. Dear Caddy, I hate reading with one pixel wide words. Thank you for the good night. Us necromancers don't get much line live action. If if something was what if if you know what I mean. So I'll... Oh, it... I'm sitting here trying to read the note when it's all here. Thank you for a good night, us next you know what I mean. So I'll definitely be the talk of the crypts, though you may want to steer clear of Garlas Agia in the future, since my comrades tend to be a jealous flock, and there's a small chance they may kill you on sight. I must say, though, their jealousy is warranted. Intercool was... Enjoyable. I apologize I could not bid you farewell in person, but the guards in the city have some questions about how I acquired several of those human skulls, which I lack a legal way to answer that question. Hopefully some confections I purchased next door will suffice in the place of a true goodbye. I also mixed a potion of cure disease and left it on the dresser. While I don't wish to imply anything negative about myself or my kinsmen, I will say that you'll probably want to drink it as soon as possible. Thanks for finding me. D. P.S. Your Argonian friend seemed rather upset when she came home this morning. I offered to help clean up the mess we made, but she still wants to talk to you when you wake up. Oh. Yeah. Fair point. I mean, 
If this thing doesn't go away, it's clearly been here a while. If it doesn't go away, then you have come up net positive with free room service. Just saying. Key potion, sell it for cash. Yeah, no, <laughs> you're going to want to drink it. There are things in life that are more important than money. One of them is not having an STD. <laughs> it tastes like pie crust and feet. Not so bad that you need to cleanse it with chocolate, though. You want to hang on to those in case you can sell those later. Check the dresser. Maybe there's clothes this time. Dear self, buy more clothes. Me. Who wrote that? Was it, um, quill weave? There's just the pants that she bought for Gorug. Well, and her note reminding her to buy more clothes. Yeah, it was her. Stuff answering questions like seconds after I get, I try to put them together. Your future clearly lies in drunken pro <laughs> So get out there and find yourself a street corner. <laughs> Excuse me, but there's certain things you have set out to change in your new life. Anyway, you've been down that road. You did all right back at home. I mean, you weren't technically, uh... But you certainly got around. Nabbing breakfast on your way out was enough to keep you fed. Other people's... And if times ever got particularly tough, you had a family you could mooch off of. It was an existence, but it wasn't a very good life. You always wanted something more, like an occupation you didn't have to be ashamed of, or a friend you didn't have to turn tricks... Or a friend you didn't have to turn tricks for. What does that mean? Maybe you just want dignity. Yeah, that's sort of why you've got the whole new life. Oh, wearing the pants. Okay, I was like, why is her leg brown now? Like, look at you right now. The only other person in this house is Quillweave, who has already seen you naked and is also a female. And you're wearing pants anyways. That's because you have dignity. A little bit anyways. Speaking of quill weave, well, you guess the best you can do is apologize profusely, take the blame of your miserable failure, and not ask for a second chance, and just, you know, leave, right? Or try to sneak out the door, or the window. Uh, you're kind of apprehensive about jumping out of a second story building that's got a window lined with broken glass. Katia, confront your maybe still friend. Phew, at least it looks like you guys didn't wreck her hall with- Yeah, still have that enhanced magicka thing. Duck. Okay, this pat con I can't words. Okay, this cat pun thing is getting out of hand. You've got to find someone who can help you with this. Yeah, you gotta find someone who can help you with the cat puns. Maybe teach you some other animal-themed puns. Like, what if they got... What if you met a comedian that teached you some, like, lizard puns or necromancer puns? Then you could make puns about other stuff instead of yourself. Um, tangent aside. Okay, the cat pun thing is getting out of hand. You've gotta find someone who can help you with this. You're right, though. Sneaking out would just be cowardly after everything she's done for you. Time to do this. Don't run from your one, maybe still, friend. You find her in the kitchen. You totally could have snuck out without any problems if you had tried. Too late now, anyway. Yeah. Hey, you say. Hey, she says back. I kinda messed up, you explained. In fact, I messed up pretty bad. I'm really sorry, and I understand you're probably really mad at me. If you want, I'll just leave now and not come back. I'd understand if that's what you wanted. Quillweave tells you that she is mad, yes, but she also wants to know what happened. You tell her about the whole story. Okay, let's see here, story mode. You tell her about the whole story. You tell her about how Guru gave you the money to hire a repairman and you didn't tell her because you wanted it to be a surprise and how you turned out to be a trick and Garug the Chad threatened to kill you and took all of your stuff. You were really sad and cried a bit about that but you kept going towards Kavach because you didn't want to let anyone down more than you had to but 
Then you saw some runes and thought maybe you could find something valuable in there. Maybe you could still buy a new book. And you did find something valuable. But then there were also monsters and you accidentally set some stuff on fire and the place collapsed. So you were heading outside, you kind of broke everything you found. And then you were sad and confused and then you had a drink. I don't know what happened that, but evidently it involved having ended up back in the upstairs bedroom with a necromancer and maybe a skeleton. Somewhere in there you even lost the nice clothes she bought you. It's your fault, and you're sorry. You should have told her about the repairman or followed her advice and just stayed on the road. Everything that went wrong was because you kept trying to do a good job and failing. Maybe you can't do a good job. Golu says that she's still disappointed in you. You made mistakes that could have been avoided if you had played your cards better, and you gave up when things got too hard, but you're not worthless. Cadia is the best wizard, has all the magicka. Boosh. Merchandise. Everyone looks up to her. She never has to break. Be a sp. Oh, oh, sp. Something. Oh, sad that. You have aspirations. You really want to make your life into something better. Something significant. You might not be worth much now, but you're also not satisfied with who you are. Sure, you've done nothing but mess up. Even though your intentions were good, everything you did was because you wanted to help get things better, but you just kind of failed and... Well, the fact that you were trying to do good must count for something. <clears throat> Sad cat. Hey, the envelope made it back at the very least. You ask if this means she'll give you a second chance. Maybe you can still get that letter to Kvach. You'll be carefuler this time. You can prove to her that you can be different. Quill Weave admits she is apprehensive. She isn't just giving you work out of pity. She really needs things done. And she really wants you to repay for her damaged room. While she recognized you are enthusiastic to help, you still haven't shown much success. Employing you is kind of risky. Story of her life. She has to think about this. It's not a decision that can be made on a whim. Maybe you could just come back a little later? After she's had some time to think it over? If you can find someone in town who's willing to employ you instead, that would probably be better. Feel free to borrow the sheet until she has a chance to get you a proper shirt. You ask if she forgives you. She's the closest thing you've had to a friend you explain, and you really need a friend right now. She has to think about it. Oh. Hmm. You try your best to smile as you offer her the chocolates the necromancer gave you. This certainly put you closer to being forgiven, she says, but she still needs time to deliberate. Maybe reconvene in an hour or two? You agree and quickly say goodbye. You guess that went better than you were expecting. She doesn't hate you, but thinking about how much you let her down still puts a nod in your stomach. At least what's done is done. You've confronted her and and told the truth about everything. You just wish you could feel better about it. Turn that blanket into a cape before anything else. That might get you in trouble with the guards. Well, okay, this actually makes you feel a little better. You look ridiculous, though. Go to the Fighters Guild. You're a good... You're a cat. You should... It should be easy to kill some rats. Oh. Okay, have you ever actually seen a Cyrodiilian rat? Yeah, they're kind of large. Saw one once in a traveling circus. They had it fighting an alligator. <laughs> yeah. The rat lost, but it was still pretty terrifying. Basically, if someone is willing to hire trained fighters to kill something, it's something untrained people should avoid. Actually, maybe they were just feeding that alligator. You were only like six when you saw it, but your point about hiring trained fighters still stands. That's a spirit. However, you might want to wrap up in some kind of sort of toga. Wasn't that what they were suggesting in the beginning? To like, 
wrap the towel around in a way so you didn't have to just hold it. Yeah, you're fond of the cape, but you should probably make some effort to actually cover up. How's this? Yeah, that's better. You look great. Colon three. Eee, thanks. That actually is not terrible. Of course, Quilly will probably want to have her bed sheets back eventually. Gadia, take some time to relax. Is there a central commons or park to Cyrodiil? Oh, is she... Yeah, she did say she was going to Cyrodiil, so she's actually in the city. Uh, maybe you could spend, like, half an hour of the two or three hours you have right now to just take a breather. That, and you might someone looking for work there, or get an idea of what to do next. Cyrodiil is the country, not the town, but yeah, maybe it's time for a break. Cyrodiil. Capital is Cyrodiil. Isn't it the town? You find a nice little spot and lounge around for about 20 minutes. Take some time to just meditate on your own thoughts. Maybe level up a bit. Hopefully you'll be able to find some more work in town. Even if they don't know of any jobs at the docks, maybe someone else will have a better idea. Maybe some manual labor, something you absolutely can't mess up. If you absolutely have to head out of town again, it might also benefit you to find a traveling partner, a friend willing to watch their back. Of course, to get that, you actually kind of have to make friends. You keep hoping someone will talk to you, but they mostly avoid getting near you or whisper things whenever you come into view. Right now, though, you have a bigger issue you need to tackle. Spontaneous combustion. Yeah, that is a pretty big issue that you're probably going to want to work out. You guess you have magic powers or something? You can't help but feel that your life might have been different if this had happened sooner? Maybe you could have built it into a talent, apprenticed under a few wizards in Hammerfell, and had your life go down an entirely different path. You wish you knew why this is only happening now, when it's too late to matter. Well, only one way to find out. Like I was saying, it's probably that blue flame. I don't remember exactly how long that enhances your magicka, but it does it for quite a while. Like, a few days. But you already were kind of doing the whole spontaneous combustion before that, it's just that it got a lot worse once that happened. Go some, find some mages to ask about these sick fires, bro. It seems like it should be pretty prioritized. I <sighs> Visit the mage guild, Katia. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks. So, like, these are actually, even though they're not the best drawn, they're actually drawn after some of the characters that work in the Cyrodelian Mages Guild in Oblivion. Like, it's close enough that I recognize them. It takes you a little while to find the local Mages Guild. You're a nervous out of your mind as you walk down the steps into the building. It's been a decade since you even saw a wizard, and you're not really sure what to expect. In Hammerfell, there were some pretty weird stereotypes about wizards, but you're sure they can't all be true. You agreed enthusiastically. Zarasha, this is certainly a surprise. What are you doing all the way down here in... Oh dear, you're some other random female Khajiit, aren't you? Well, this is certainly awkward. What is it you need? I don't like the way some things are weird worded, but it makes sense. Racism. Even wizards do it. So, that's where I'm going to leave this episode, with us just getting into the Mages Guild and almost getting introduced to some of the people that are about it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!